Well, a new school year is less than a week away for students and their families. Marable Childress, the superintendent of the Gravit School District, joining us live today to talk about how the district is preparing during a global pandemic. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. So let's start with the different learning options for families with the upcoming school year. What are students able to choose from? All of our students at Gravit have the choice of five days of on-site learning um, every week or an online version. So they have their choice of coming on-site or online. And is online learning something that the Gravit District has offered in the past or is this something new for 2020? We have done done it before for some students with special circumstances, but this will be the first time that we have offered it to all of our students um, as a learning option. And what percentage of students have signed up for that virtual as opposed to coming in person? About 25% of our students are choosing the online option. Face mask policy for both students and for staff. Sure. I didn't hear all of your questions, Chandra, but I think you're asking about the face covering policy. And so all of the adults in our school district, of course, are going to wear face masks and all students grades three and up are also going to be required to wear face masks when physical distancing isn't possible. For our K-2 students, it's going to be parent choice. If parents want their children to wear the face coverings, um, then we'll make sure that that happens. And for those parents that prefer their students don't, we'll also honor that. Interesting. All right. Can you give us a few examples maybe of how teachers in your district in Gravit are innovating and getting creative to make sure that their classrooms are set up safely for in-person learning, but done in a way that's going to be accommodating to students and just in a safe way? Sure, absolutely. You know, one of the things that we have really focused on is wanting school to be that return to normal, um, that escape from the pandemic for our students. And so we're really working to set up our classrooms and our school schedules um, to make sure that the school is as normal as it can be and that learning is still fun. And so um, some of the things we've done, for instance, associated with lunch, our high school has added extra lunch shifts so that students can still go to the commons and have lunch with their friends and socialize in a distanced way. In our elementary schools, uh, we've had great community support and people helping um, with getting picnic tables. So there are outside dining options as well as dining in the cafeteria. Again, so students can socialize and eat together in a physically distanced way. Um, in our hallways, we have lion prints on the floors to keep students um, safe and distanced when they're waiting in line or in the hallway. And within the classrooms, uh, some of the examples, for instance, instead of sharing manipulatives this year, our students will have their own treasure box of manipulatives that they can use uh, when they're doing work in the classroom. And so um, trying, just trying to make it fun and trying to make it special, but as normal as possible, we, we, we want that opportunity for our students, that return to normal. Sure. And I'm sure you've heard from a lot of parents over the summer. What are some of the biggest concerns that you've heard directly from families? And how are those being addressed? Sure. Um, of course, the families that are coming on site, um, just like us, they want health and safety. And so that's why we're really uh, working to make sure that the face coverings um, are in place and that people are following that. The physical distancing, we know how very important that is. Uh, we do have some online families that really want that option that had some um, trouble with internet connectivity in their area. And so thanks to uh, the governor and his partnership, we have hotspots that we can share with families in our attendance area if they need help with internet connectivity. That's great to hear. Well, we have more questions for you. We'll do those on the other side of this break. Great. We are once again joined live by Maribel Childress, the superintendent of the Gravit School District, answering questions about the impact of COVID-19 on the upcoming school year. Superintendent, I know a lot of people have questions about sanitation protocols. What is your district going to be following for both regular cleaning and then if or when someone does get sick in one of your buildings? Sure, absolutely. And so we have hand sanitizers and uh, 
disinfectant in all of the classrooms. And so we will be disinfecting between classes. Uh, we have an extra crew of custodians that we have hired to help during this time. And so they will be doing sanitizing on all of the high touch areas and the high traffic areas. We are fogging all of our buildings every night. We are also sanitizing our buses in between runs and routes and um, doing a deep cleaning on all of our buses every night. Uh, and you know, one of the things that some parents had worried about were the chemicals in the disinfectant and in the sanitizing, but the, the materials that we have always used have been hospital grade. And so it's the same chemicals, the same disinfectant that we have always used. Um, so that's not a concern. We're just gonna be doing more of it, more deep cleaning and more frequent cleaning to make sure that all surfaces are as germ-free as possible. Sure, good to hear. Let's also talk about students that are involved in either sports or other extracurricular activities. Uh, what kind of protocols will be in place to make sure that those students are safe? Absolutely. We have our first volleyball game tonight. Our junior high girls um, have a scrimmage tonight. So um, go Lions. I'll be going there in a few minutes. Um, but the athletic um, department and I have been working very closely together to make sure we're following those guidelines. Uh, we got new guidelines on Friday about um, the percentages of spectators that can be there. Um, We've had conversations about how to do tickets, how to seat spectators. Um, obviously, it's going to be a, a much smaller audience for tonight's volleyball game. Um, probably 25 to 30 percent of the capacity that we have had before. Um, but just so grateful that we get to go and watch and support our athletes. And so um, we. We want to be able to play these games. We want to have fall sports. And so we're counting on our community to help us follow all of the guidelines so that our athletes can continue to play. Well, good luck to them playing tonight and good luck to the district as it gets ready to start school next week. And hopefully you're able to stay safe and healthy. Great. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. We'll be back with Garrett after this.